Hurricane Otis is now the strongest storm to ever make landfall on the Pacific coast of Mexico, a historic storm, and already we have reports of catastrophic damage. This storm unexpectedly intensified. It went from a 50 mile an hour tropical storm into an explosive category five hurricane with 165 mile an hour winds. And that happened in less than 24 hours. So very little time to prepare. Otis is the first Eastern Pacific hurricane to ever make landfall as a category five. And when you look at that intensity, that's top intensity. Here's what the storm looked like to overnight. Yeah, right before the lights went out, so you see the wind and the hearing of the waves in the ocean kicking up. Mexico's president says communication with the state of Herrero is, and that's where Acapulco is located, is com completely cut off. No word yet on if there are any deaths or injury. There's just a complete lack of communication. Officials are scrambling to restore communications and get some early damage assessments to come in. But a nightmare scenario for Acapulco, at least a million people live there on the coast. It's a big tourist destination. and They just had um, such a, a little amount of time to know that this was going to be a major storm. The anticipation was that it might be a Category 1 at landfall, but this really revved up in rapid intensification. Here's some brand new video. This is into Fox Weather. Utter destruction. This is a condominium complex there in Acapulco. Local news stations are reporting that multiple neighborhoods there are without the electricity and power. And we know that Mexico has deployed various branches of their military. And that's all in an effort to help people as they start to realize what has happened and whatever destruction and, and uh, mess there is to clean up. When you look at this, up to two, uh, up to 20 inches of rain possible with the storms that moves inland. But the real statistic that's going to be uh, jumping out all day today is 165 mile an hour winds that came with this storm. The storm is moving inland. It weakens, but it still could produce some big gusts of wind. It can still create problems with rain and flooding and mudslides. We have a mountain range just inland from this coastal location. But main point here is this storm underwent unprecedented change. It, it grew in intensity so quickly that as it moved inland, this was very powerful. You look back, and Otis is stronger than Pauline. It hit Acapulco in 1997, basically made landfall well south of Acapulco, but came through and was a very damaging storm mm -hmm. um, for that area. 200 people died back in 1997 with that storm in Mexico, and, and it greatly impacted the resort town. Now you look at this, and everything that we had yesterday at this time was based on satellite data. And you know, if you have a foundation based on satellite data, okay, there could be some holes, there could be some issues, but it wasn't until the air recon got into that storm and all of a sudden we knew that there was going to be rapid intensification that we had any warning that this was going to be a monster storm for this resort city. It just shows how irreplaceable the data is that comes in from the hurricane hunts. The National Hurricane Center tipping their hat to them as well because that data is better than satellites. I, I mean, when you look at it, satellites and, and the evolution have been tremendous, and they help this satellite era. It's been a game changer when it comes to forecasting, but there are still challenges here. And regarding it, one of those hurricanes that will not be talked about is Hurricane Otis, especially since... It made that landfall so close a couple of miles south of, of Acapulco. 165 mile per hour winds. In the eastern Pacific, we haven't seen a hurricane like this ever to strike Mexico. Now you head on the Atlantic side, a different story. We had Dean as recent as 2007, Amy, that hit the Yucatan Peninsula. Those winds were 175. So there have been stronger hurricanes to hit Mexico, but on this western coastline, not the case. Yeah, a failure of the computer models to pick up the necessary data, and they'll go back and they'll look and they'll say, what went, ha what went wrong here, what happened, and how can we make a better situation going forward for our ability to forecast? But this certainly is going to be put on the learning curve. Um, Kiana, when you look at this, uh, the Eastern Pacific now basically overhauled as this storm comes through with whatever stats have been in place before. That's right. Otis is now topping the list when it comes to records that have been broken in the Eastern Pacific. We've seen that explosive intensification mm -hmm. within a short yeah. amount of time. Now making Otis not only the strongest hurricane to impact the eastern seaboard of Mexico, but also the first Category 5 storm. We had those winds that came through 165 miles per hour. As I mentioned, it is now number one on that list for strongest landfalling Pacific hurricanes. Second to that is Patri uh, Patricia. Yes, that, that was a Category 5 storm as well. But now it looks like it came through as a, cat a high end Category 4 storm with winds at 150 miles per hour, sliding second in place, and then 
we see these two storms, guys, and beyond that, we have to take it back decades for the last strongest storm. So the last, say, 10 years or so have been very active, and I think with this particular storm, Otis, we had a window of some very warm sea surface temperatures, and that led to that that rapid intensification that we saw in such a short amount of time. We'll have to watch. We do have another disturbance that we'll be watching, too. Could we see another maybe major storm once again in the eastern Pacific? That's the big question. Pilar is the next name yes. on the list. It is a P storm. All right, Fox Weather's Nicole Valdez is going to join us now. She has been updating uh, on the situation with Acapulco and the visuals coming in. Nicole, this is a storm, Hurricane Otis, something of which this part of Mexico has never seen before. And a lot of the damage was done at night. So in the light of day, we start to get our first eyewitness accounts of what, what happened. Yeah, Amy, and the videos that we are seeing, of course, are devastating, especially for a community and, and really a state and a country that really didn't have a lot of time to prepare themselves for a worst case scenario when you're talking about such an intense hurricane. Uh, but we are getting some new information from uh, many officials, including the governor of the state of Guerrero, one of them uh, really now in the line of Otis being uh, dealt some of the worst blows from the intense winds from here. Here's what she said. Governor Evelyn Salgado Pineda says mobile communication has been affected. That being said, we are already in coordination to reestablish those phone lines as soon as possible. We will continue to monitor the needs of our community. I ask that everyone remain calm, avoid spreading rumors, and continue to pay close attention to official information. Of course, when you know something changes in such a short period of time, it's maybe hard for some people to know what's true, what's not true, as they sort of really hunker down for this. And here are some of the images that we have been getting of the devastating uh, winds from this storm. We know the Mexican National Guard has been mobilized in the state of Guerrero. They're already out clearing debris, removing uh, stranded cars from the roads. Many people probably just running from there, recognizing that is not a safe place to be for a storm of this magnitude. And one of the uh, really calls for uh, officials was for those who are not only living in places like Herrero, but uh, visiting there to just remain where you are. Try to shelter in place. Don't try to go outside until you have the all clear, or at least until you get a much better visual out there. Because look at this. I mean, those roads look like they're already starting to pile water up. Those are the soldiers there, uh, not only that have been clearing that debris, but actually several of them were told that have been sort of monitoring the beaches, making sure that people aren't out in this very uh, intense storm. Now, we do know that there was a disaster plan that was activated ahead of the storm's arrival. Uh, the president there saying that he had soldiers uh, patrolling those areas, trying to make sure that as that storm approached, uh, that was something that they prevented. And thankfully, there are temporary shelters that have been established in several municipalities, as well as school closures. So, Amy, people there, officials trying to do what they can to get a handle on this and keep as many people safe as possible. I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.